who else was just moving and grooving to that countdown music? Let me know in the comment or over in the premiere chat if you did. Welcome to day 18, right? Well, not really for me, but for you, of my Crafty Advent 2023 live series. My name is Alicia, but as always, you can call me Crafty Al. You might have noticed scrolling along the bottom of the screen was a notice. I will pull that up here so we can talk about it. So this is usually a live series, but if you have been watching, you know that I am traveling out of state today to close up my mom's estate with the lawyer. So today, day 18, and tomorrow, day 19, these will be re pre-recorded. I hope to be back on Wednesday the 20th with another live video, but I didn't want to miss out on opening my gifts, creating a tag, and then sharing that with you. So I hope that if you are able to catch this, that you'll be able to enter to win the tag. Speaking of winning, um, I will give, so, sorry. You know, I'm recording this like it's live, but if this was a regular video, I would edit all this mumbling out. But anyway, there are a few special giveaways in this series. One of them is each day I am giving away the tag I create. Now, normally you have to be with me in the live chat to be entered to win that. But because this is special, I am going to tell you at the end of the video how you can enter to win the tag that I create today. That is open to any subscriber anywhere in the world. Now, if you live in the U.S. and you're a subscriber, and you might like to win a special prize, which I guess I forgot to tell you what this is all about. Each day I am stopping by to open up my three crafty advent calendars, spellbinders, crafters companion, and tailored expressions. Then I create a tag with it. Well, at the end of the month, I am gonna give away a spellbinders and a crafters companion advent calendar to, well, two different lucky subscribers. Now for this one, you do have to live in the US. And if you're interested in winning, as I have shared my videos this month, I'm giving secret words and you will want to collect those. So like today, I will give you a secret word. You'll want to make sure you write that down and say that that was day 18 secret word. I will be back at the very end of the month with an in-depth video telling you how you can get your entries in to win those calendars. Now, if you want a basic overview of what this series is about, I did do a kickoff video and I have it as well as the entire Crafty Advent 2023 series. I have, as long as that, as well as that playlist, I have it linked in the description box below. One thing to keep in mind though, that these are secret words. Do not share them in the chat or in the comments. I really want those of you, like yourself, who are watching these videos and joining me to be the ones who get entered into this giveaway. And if you do happen to share those secret words, you will be disqualified. So please don't do it. Let's keep this fun and crafty and yes, get entered to win those, right? I want to go to my overhead and take a look at all of the tags I have created so far. So here are my first 17 tags. While they all look pretty much completely different, they all use the same color combo. And that is going to be color cube card number 11 from Sarah Renee Clark's color cube boxes. I've gotten a lot of questions on these lately, whether I think they're worth it, would I recommend buying it, how to find out more about it. Honestly, I love my color cubes because if it's not a rainbow, I can't put together color combos, okay? So they help me when I need some inspiration. I love to just pull some out at random or choose with a random number generator and then make myself create with it. Now, if you want more information, I do have a link in the description box below and you can go find out about all the different options. It is an affiliate link, so I make a small commission if you do purchase, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. So I hope that you will consider that. I think now though, guys, should we open up these advent calendars? Gonna go ahead and put away my tags so far. 
I just have a photo box I've been keeping these in and I made a little divider keeping them safe until they go out to the winners which that's a good thing to mention now if you do win one of the tags I will not be sending these out until like the end of December beginning of January because I'm going to be doing a recap video where I share everything I have made so far so I will be hanging on to them just a little bit As always, I like to start with Spellbinders, and again, today 18. I have to keep remembering that because it's not the 18th. So I'm going to look for day 18, and um, usually in the live chat, we like to guess what it is. So here, it's maybe two inches wide by three inches tall. Let me know your guess either in the premiere chat or in a comment later. And let's see what it is. I'm going to guess... You know what? I could really use some embellishments. So I'm going to say embellishments. Let's see what the... Oh, there's nothing on the door, guys. So that's a good sign that it is... Um, it's embellishments. Let's see. Because they usually put the picture of the stamp or the dies there. Oh, those... Oh, my gosh. Those are gorgeous, you guys. They. It's kind of like a blue-purple. Now, unfortunately, these don't go with our color palette, but maybe if one day I do more of a monochromatic card, I could just put some accents, um, you know, just like an, a pop of different color. Those are very pretty. And then from Crafter's Companion, day, oh, right here. So it's about two inches wide by maybe three and a half, four inches tall. I'm going to guess a stamp and die and this one i kind of already i haven't looked at it yet but i kind of broke it apart when i tore another door all right are we ready <gasps> Ooh, ooh! it is a stamp and die let's see what we got here oh quite a few let me get out a little piece of cardstock to put these on okay so the stamps, it's like some little squiggle lines here. Those could be used for lots of different. We have this fun little banner die, a bow, and then I think these are some balloons. That is pretty fun. All right. Lots in that door today. Wow. And last, but certainly not least, we have Tailored Expressions. Now, yesterday we got the little, um, kind of like the jokey calendar cards, and it had a space for scratch-off. I'm wondering if we'll get some scratch-off stickers today to use with that. About this big in the bottom, not very flexible. Let's see what we got, guys. If you've gotten any advent calendars this year, let me know in the chat or in the comments if they're crafty or if they're just any general advent calendar. Are we ready? Okay, okay, here we go. It says scratch-offs. Scratch-off stickers are a truly fun way to dress up your cards or projects with an interactive element. Give your recipients the thrill of discovering sweetness, unlocking laughs, or revealing snark. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. They pair especially well with joke-themed square calendar cards, which is what we got yesterday. And we also got a square tear-off calendar for 20, ooh, for 2024 already. Um, this is one of the, the calendars, the tear-off calendars are one of Tailored Expression's biggest products or most sold products. So if you ever need any of these for uh, making little gifts or even to put on card fronts, check them out. I'll see if I can link it later down in the description box. And then we got some of the stickers um, to go over the scratch off. Let me go over, I'll get the cards from yesterday and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so yesterday we got these cute little cards and they have, you know, like a the beginning of a question or a joke up here, like what happened after the cat ate a ball of yarn? And at the bottom it says she had mittens. Well, what you do is 
you cover up the punchline with that, and then the recipient can cra can scratch that off to reveal the joke. So I had a feeling that we would we would be getting some of those. Now, because of the size of these, I'm not sure that I can use them on a tag. So yet like yesterday, um, I left that off. But you know what? Today I'm going to leave it on the wheel because you're here in a minute. We'll you know, figure out which product I'm going to use. I'm going to leave it on the wheel today and maybe we can make a tag that opens and the punchline can go on the inside if tailored expression gets chosen, if tailored expressions gets chosen. Oh, I guess I could have left that out while we did the drawing. Let's go find out what I'll be working with. So here on my wheel, I will go ahead and leave tailored expressions on there. The only one with two options left is viewer's choice. Mm, I was going to go get my daughter and have her look. You know what? We'll take them off today. She's upstairs doing some work. So I will take those off today. So it's, well, it's going to be one of our companies. Are we ready? Because I've already had artist choice. Here we go. All righty. So this, this could be interesting. I think I'm going to have to go. So we have to use the spellbinders, which were the sequins. I think I'm going to have to go. Yeah. With something a little monochromatic and um, add these as that pop of color. And I think what I might do, since I also have some pink sequins from earlier this month from spellbinders Maybe once again, I know I've already done like a monochromatic pink card, but or watermelon. I think I will do monochromatic watermelon once again and then just have these pops of color. OK, so I'm going to get set up for that or we'll pull in the card kit. Now, although I am recording this like it's live, I might pause every once in a while just so I can cut out some of that really dead air stuff that sometimes you just have to live through when it's alive. And I'm also trying to do laundry while I record these. So we have clothes to wear when we go out of town. So there will be a little bit of pausing on this, but you won't miss anything important. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull out our card kit. I'm going to leave the sequence here. And you know what? I might, I might use, uh, I might use those. I might use that banner. That's kind of fun. When I did the kickoff, we all decided together on the color combo. And then I picked out inks and cardstocks to match those. So like I mentioned, I'm going to stick today with watermelon. Because I think that, well, you know what? I have no idea about color theory. I don't know what's complementary or triad or any of that stuff. You know what? I'm going to use watermelon. Yeah, I'm going to use watermelon, pineapple, and then add color with the sequins. You know what? Everybody loved the shaker card the other day. So let's go with the shaker card dies once again. And don't forget, after I have recorded these, I will add other products that I have used. Links to those so you can find out more down in the description box. I'm going to get out one little piece of white here. All right, I think I'll have to get out white card, another piece of white cardstock for my tags. I'm going to put my balloons to the side for now. Spellbinders the other day, what I do allow myself, if you're newer to the series, I really try to stick to only those card socks, markers, and inks that we chose at the beginning and the tag dies. But what I do allow myself is to bring in other things that I have gotten during the month. So here is the little bin of odds and ends I've gotten. 
I think this stamp from Spellbinders might make a nice addition. Um, so I'm going to keep that out. And I'm going to go ahead and get out the yellow. Sorry, not the yellow. The sequins that are kind of watermelon looking. And then I'll see later if I need any more of this stuff. And just like the other day, I don't have time to cut this in half, so I'm just going to fold it in half and tear it so it fits in my die cutter. Okay, I'm going to cut this banner. Let's see, the blue can only be the pop of color, and I'm only going to have blue and pink in my shaker. So I think I want to have... Probably my shaker frame and pineapple, but I don't think I'm going to have room for that. So I'll have to get more out. But I want to cut one of these from pineapple, one from watermelon. And then I think I'll get out my black cardstock and cut one using that. Let me know in the comment section which product you would have liked to play with today and what you might have made with it. Super cute little banner there. Run one through on the red or the watermelon. And I get out some black cardstock. I just recently started using my magic mat and I am enjoying it. Do you have a magic mat? Do you enjoy it? I know that some people got them and had issues. I did have a little problem with it cutting all the way through. So I put um, a piece of chipboard between some of my plates to give it just a little more pressure. So I've had some pretty good luck after I did that. And now I just want um, my shaker. So I need to make my tag. So the back, I want to cut two of the back from the white, one to actually put on the tag, and then one I turn around and it's the one I sign. I always put my signature in the, the day that I made the tag so the winner knows, and it will help me keep them straight as well. Now, I will be sharing, I do, I do know that I need a secret word, so I'm going to think about that because the first one I thought of, um, it was already used, so I'm going to have to think about this one, but I will get your secret word. The other day I made a shaker tag and I cut a whole bunch of white copies to layer up the sides. I think today I'm just going to go with foam tape. Um, I think it gives me the, the depth just a little bit quicker. But before I can worry about that, I need some more pineapple. I'm going to put the rounded edge in first. Sometimes I just like to, if I can avoid putting in a straight edge, I do. And if I put in a straight edge first, I always make sure to angle it just a little bit to help it go through the die cutter. I have a little piece of yellow I can use later for something. And I have the frame for my shaker tag. I think that might be all the die cutting that I need to do. So let's put this to the side and let's build our little banner. Since the frame is yellow and this will be going on there, I think I want my, hmm, but do I, no, I think I'll do my outsides in paint in the watermelon just so they stand out a little bit more. I'm going to use this as my base which is the black one. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm just going to go in with my scissors and just cut these off the string. Oh, I need the triangle one for this.
you could keep these little bits here and then make an, another banner too if you just cut one more background. So I might hang on to those. And because I am using the liquid glue, I have a little wiggle time to get those lined up as best as possible. You know, it probably won't ever be perfect, but I'll get as close as I can. Let me know in the comments or in the chat if you have made shaker tags, shaker cards, anything shaker related before. And if you haven't, let us know that as well if you're new to shakers and if you haven't tried one yet let us know if you want to or if you don't think that they're your thing which i completely understand i'm not sure how my blue sequins are going to look with this but it started now so we have to go for it <laughs> again if you know as i say every day if this is not if this tag is not appealing to you wait for another day and enter for that tag i don't want to force a not as excellent tag on anyone but otherwise i hope you that you'll keep watching um, and listening for how you can enter to win this and while i'm thinking about it i want to give you today's secret word which sometimes people like to guess please don't guess in case you get it right but Maybe you can guess in your head what you think today's secret word will be. I'm going to have it be banner. And that is going to be in honor of the Crafter's Companion banner die. B-A-N-N-E-R. Like I always say, you won't have to spell that correctly in the end. But just so you know the word I'm saying, I like to spell it as well for you. I'm going to write that word down so I don't forget. Remember, if you're a subscriber in the U.S., you'll want to write that word down as well and make sure you put next to it that it was from day 18. All right, so we'll sit that to the side, let that dry. I do need to go over and get some acetate for my shaker tag, which the other day I tried to um, cut on my cut with the die and it wouldn't work. I'll be right back. I think I know why my acetate would not cut the other day. So I have a couple different thicknesses of clear cardstock, and I pulled it out of the thinner slot, but apparently I had put the thick back in there. This is a lot thinner, so I am going to try to cut this again with my die cutter, which for now I'm just going to leave off to the side since you've already seen me die cut, right? Speaking of die cutting, let us know in the comments or the chat what you use to do your die cutting. Um, and if you have a few die cutting options, let us know what your favorite one is. I had the cuddle bug for the longest time. That was my first die cutter that I had, you know, like at home. I had that for the longest time and loved it. Now it's no longer made, but if you have a cuddle bug, you can get like generic plates off of um, Amazon to fit it. But I started with, um, I started designing for a company that had five by seven dies. Well, those wouldn't fit through the cuddle bug. So luckily I had bought a big kick from Michael's when it was on clearance. So I did have a backup that I could use. That still didn't cut it. I'm going to roll it back through there one time just to see if it, if that'll help. Because I swear that this acetate used to cut with thinlets dies. I am, of course, still getting kind of used to the magic mat. So it could just be that I don't know yet kind of how to do that one. I'm just going to roll it through a couple times. And if this doesn't work, just like the other day, I'll cut it out and glue it to the back. At least it kind of gives me, yeah, no, it, it kind of gives me an idea of where to cut. You can see here, it put a nice crease in it for me, but it just didn't cut through anywhere. So I'm just gonna take, actually, I'm not gonna take my nonstick scissors. I'm just gonna take some other scissors here and cut this out, cutting a little bit in from where the crease is. And then at the top, I'm not gonna cut the 
rounded part out, I'm just going to cut like across. And I'll put this now on the back of that. Now, I kept forgetting the other day. I am going to try. Actually, I won't do that quite yet. I'm going to try putting my anti-static powder tool on there just to keep things from sticking to the acetate. But first, I want to glue this down because I don't want to do that and then have the powder keep me from being able to adhere the acetate to my front. Got some straggle, stragglers on there, some little thready things. And then I'm going to press this down. And I'm going to let this one sit under a block for a couple minutes, okay? Why don't I, while that is drying, let's kind of figure out what I want to do for the sediment. I'm just going to bring this in so I have an idea of kind of what will fit. I don't know if we should try it since we've already had the acetate. I'm thinking, what if I stamp the happy birthday and stays on right onto the shaker window? I know it's a little iffy now since we have it together, but you know what? If it goes wrong, I can cover it up later by stamping the happy birthday on another piece of cardstock and adhering over it. But I want to try that, okay? I will, though, have to wait, I guess, until, yeah, you know what? I am going to give that five minutes to dry, but I'm not going to make you sit here and wait with me for five minutes. So I'm going to pause the recording and then I'll be back, okay? All right, guys, my front of the shaker has dried. So I brought in my mini Misty, the Spellbinder stamp set, and stays on ink. This is a special ink that if you want to stamp on non-porous surfaces, so like um, vellum, acetate, like I'm stamping on, maybe photo paper, although that might soak it in depending on the kind, you'll want something like this. And I brought in the banner that I made just to kind of get an idea of where it might go so I can get my birthday stamp set up. Now, because I can see through this, I'm going to have a good idea of if it's straight or not. I do have it all the way down here in the right corner, just in case I have to stamp it again. But I am going to go ahead and put my magnet on there. Pick that up. Oop, yep, see? Good thing I started with it right down in that corner because it did pick up the plastic. Now, sometimes new stamps have kind of uh, manufacturing oils on them, and they don't like to take the ink right away. So what I'm doing is just rubbing my fingers across there, and it kind of turns the stamp dull that you might notice. And now, are we ready? Cross your fingers. Put some crossed fingers over in the chat or in the comment section. <laughs> If it doesn't work, we'll just cover it up with a banner, but I hope it does. And I'm not going to press really hard because these are acrylic stamps. I think it's called not photopolymer. They're a little bit squishier. It is a different material than Spellbinders usually has for their stamps because they're usually nice and firm. Oops, I did not get the top of the birthday to stamp. Maybe I need to move this magnet away. It doesn't want to stamp the top of the birthday. So I guess I will push a little harder up here toward the top. There we go. Guys, I think that's going to work. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Now that does dry very quickly. I'm going to set it to the side. Unfortunately, because this does stick to non-porous surfaces, stays on, doesn't clean off really well. But I am going to wipe off what I can. Oh, actually, that came off pretty good. I'm not sure I'm gonna like those blue sequins with this. I'm second guessing again, but you know, we can't do, can't do anything about it now, right? We started, it's a craft, right? <laughs> Who knows, maybe I'll love it. Now what I want to do is bring in my background, which 
I think I am just going to leave white just so those shakers stand out. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave the background white. I was I was questioning myself, but we'll stick with that. And I want to build my frame now. I want to see if my quarter inch blue foam, my big blue roll of foam tape will work. Out. Mm. That is slightly too wide. I think it's gonna be seen. So what I'm gonna bring in are my tailored expressions foam sticky strips and these are definitely skinny enough just want to make sure that i make a nice little well for my sequins to go in and you could take off the release paper and have it round the corner i'm just going to cut it and make a, a squared off window or box for my sequins For the top curve, I am going to go ahead and remove the release tape. And then you'll just kind of see how once that's removed, you can then really put this around curves a lot easier. Now, if you really wanted the shakers to shake a lot, you could put another layer of foam tape. I like mine to be a little snug in there, so I'm just going to leave one layer. And what I like to do, if I have something that I'm gonna have to flip over or that would have a backer that goes on it. I am actually gonna cut a second clear acetate window to go on the back and then it will be sandwiched between two clear pieces, but you won't be able to tell that once it's on the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and using that die again and my acetate, now I know that the die cutter won't cut it out, but once again, if I just have, the start of it so I can go in and finish cutting it. That's all I need. Run it through a few times. Maybe it'll make the difference, right? Now, before I put the sequins into here, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to put a little powder so it might not stick to the window, which now I have powder on my window. I don't know if I like that either. I'm just going to kind of move that around. Then I'm going to bring in, we'll see, right? Here we go. Here goes nothing. I have to use these sequins today. <laughs> all right. I have a feeling these are going to explode all over the place when I open it. It is very sticky. I maybe should have stuck with the, mo the monochromatic idea instead of trying to get two colors. But live and learn. It's going to kind of spread those out. And then I'm going to put in some of the ones that kind of look like some watermelon cardstock. So I think that's good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to carefully peel the release paper off the foam tape because I don't want to knock this and then have the sequins go everywhere. And now I'm going to take that other piece of acetate. Oh, oh man, I about knocked those stencils. Take that other piece of acetate and put the anti-static stuff on there. This is sticky now, so I don't have to put more glue on. I'm just going to set this behind it, making sure that it grabs all those edges. And now my sequins are trapped in there. But then later when I go to put this on the backer, I will be able to easily see where everything goes. I'm wondering, like, if all these are down. Just to give this a little interest, and since the bottom will be covered by the sequins, like, if they fall down, 
I think I might emboss the top part of this. And you know what I'm going to pull out? Oh, it's over here. One of my favorite products from the entire calendar series is this dots embossing folder. So I'm just going to run it through just like that. And you know what, if, if I do this and I don't like it, we can undo it. And you know what, I need to flip that around, otherwise they're gonna be embossed. I mean, debossed, sorry. If we don't like it, I can cut another tag. That looks pretty cute. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to I wonder if I could set this in. Now I think it'll put the, I was going to see if I could put the two embossed pieces next to each other, you know, to fill that up. But I think I'll get this weird line over on that edge. Guys, I did it wrong. I thought I had flipped it the correct way, but I hadn't. So you know what? They're going to be debossed under there. Nobody, nobody will know that isn't what I meant to do, except you guys. You will always know that that was an. Now we went to, oh, that's not on there yet. Now I'm going to add some glue to this. I'm going to go ahead and put some over where my foam tape is. And then on the edge of my frame i'm putting it right where the foam tape was behind the cleat behind the backer acetate again it wants to wiggle just a little bit because i use that liquid glue but that also gives me time to make sure everything's lined up and once again you know what before i bring these in i'm going to go ahead and glue this down and it can all it can all um, dry at the same time. All right, while that dries, you might have already heard it and you might be wondering if you're doing laundry at your house, but my washer did um, do the little picking sound that it's done washing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause. I'm gonna go take care of that. And then when I get back, I think our tag will be done. All right, guys, everything is dry. And while I was off screen, I went ahead and added the second tag to the back after I signed it. And that is all dry on there. So here's a look at the day 18 shaker card. Would have been nice if I could have had some blue card stock to go with the others. But you know what? I think it's pretty festive and a shaker always makes me happy. I don't know about you. So now it is time for me to let you know how you can enter to win this tag. So at the top of the description box below, I have a link to a Google form. Now this is different than the Google form if you win a tag. If you would like to be entered to win today's tag, you do need to be a subscriber to my channel who is at least 18 years old and you can be anywhere in the world for the tag, all right? So if you wanna enter that, fill out the form below. It is gonna be two pages. So make sure you fill out each page and that you do submit each one and you should get a success message like, your form has been entered. Now, this is a little different than the normal lives where you have to be present. I'm going to leave this form open until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, and then I'm going to close it, and then I'll do the same thing tomorrow, but that will close 9 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday. And then when I get back, hopefully live on Wednesday, I will do the live drawings. Now, if you do enter to win the tag, you are going to need to claim it. So you'll have to watch Wednesday's video. You can either join us live or watch the replay. And then you'll still need to fill out 
the Google form to claim it. So in that Wednesday video, I will have a link to the claim form. And that is also two pages that you need to fill out completely. So if you don't think you're going to come back to see if you won, um, please don't enter because I really want I really want to get these tags out and I won't be tracking people down at the end of the month. So make sure to come back and watch that and find out if you need to claim it. All right. Um, if you have any questions, again, on this series, I have the kickoff video linked below. If you have any questions on anything I did today, you can leave those in the description box. And guys, I think that might be it for Crafty Advent Calendar Series Day 18. Until tomorrow, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.